it's going to be a informal conversation. <laughs> okay. Um, before we start, um, um, oh wait, we covered everything. Yes. We're good. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Uh, okay, so today we have Dr. Dinsa. He's an endocrinologist here at SLU. Um, and we're just going to be asking some questions to get to know about the specialty a little bit more. Um, so Dr. Dinsa, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, like where you're from, where you went to medical school and residency, et cetera? Yeah, so certainly. So my name is Sandeep Dinsa. I was born in India in the western part of India. It's a desert over there, a place called Rajasthan. And that's where I stayed on, uh, you know, from birth till high school, and then went for my medical school. Uh, in India, you can do that right after high school. So I went to New Delhi uh, at a place called Ames, All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And then after completing my, my what we call MBBS, the medical school, that's the degree you get. It's a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. It's equivalent to MD here. Uh, and then uh, I came to New York City in uh, Brooklyn to do my residency in internal medicine uh, at uh, SUNY. And then uh, following that, I moved to Buffalo, New York, uh, where I did my fellowship uh, in endocrinology. Uh, and uh, I've generally been in Buffalo uh, for around 10 years or so in the university as a you know, faculty. Uh, but I've also uh, lived in Texas for around six years, uh, three years in private practice and three years in a university uh, setting. Uh, the private practice was because of my visa purposes. I need to be I needed to be in an underserved area uh, for uh, getting a green card. And uh, following <coughs> the, uh, a, a short stay at uh, Texas Tech University in uh, Midland, uh, Texas. Um, that's Midland, Odessa. That's where Friday Night Lights, uh, the movie and the book was based. Um, uh, it's a it's a oil uh, town. Uh, you know, other than I think North Dakota, that's the second biggest producer of uh, oil in the place. But uh, anyway, uh, after that, I came to Saint Louis University, uh, and I've been uh, here for five years uh, now. Uh, let me ask you uh, a bit, you know, uh, this is uh, for our medical students who are interested to know more about an endocrinologist. I assume you do this with different specialties. Um, yeah, and, that's okay, and, and this happens every year? So it's um, yeah, so it's actually a fairly new program. I think last year, um, a few medical students thought this would be really helpful for students at SLU and also like outside of SLU to kind of know different specialties and kind of figure out what um, different experiences of physicians at SLU is. So that's that's kind of why we started it. And this is really the second year of the program. So um, um, yeah, sounds like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think um, the students that started it last year, they really tried to match up the physicians that we were interviewing with the topics that they were learning at the point. Um, so I know they just did um, endocrinology, which is why I think probably reached out to you and now we're learning more about that. But um, uh, you it, mean it, endocrinology in the like uh, MS2 lectures? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think it's really helpful to kind of like, see in the classroom and then hear from physicians about their lifestyle and what you actually see in practice. Yeah. Okay, great, yeah. Um, well, that sounds like a fascinating journey. Um, and so we, um, <laughs> why is it asked? So fun fact, um, you know how like as medical students, um, we like periodically do like, you know, quizzes to see what specialty might suit you best. So my specialty <laughs> like that I matched to closes was endocrinology. So me, like all of uh, all the students here are very curious to know um, what an endocrinologist does and like what we should know about your specialty. So endocrinology is uh, largely an outpatient uh, specialty. Uh, there is inpatient work as well. Uh, but that is a smaller portion. Um, and uh, it, is, it takes care of chronic diseases, 
So you have patients uh, coming on long with a long-term follow-up. Now, and uh, sometimes long-term follow-up in United States is difficult because of insurance changes and people move a, a whole lot. Uh, but still often there are people who we see for years at an end, uh, every two or three months or so. Uh, the main bread and butter is uh, diabetes that accounts for 60% of our patients, uh, largely type two. Then uh, rest is uh, thyroid, probably 20%. Then we have adrenal, pituitary, uh, hypogonadism, and uh, so on. Um, a lot of the job, you can say, would be like an eight to five uh, kind of job, so during the uh, daytime, and therefore it would certainly suit uh, uh, those personalities who would like to have a, a good work-life balance. I think that is uh, a quite important aspect of uh, endocrinology that makes it appealing uh, a lot. Uh, endocrinologists by personality, if I were to say, would be the opposite of cardiologists. Uh, they are not the aggressive kind or opposite of neurosurgeons, not the egoistical uh, kind, uh, more of a laid back. Uh, also quite uh, uh, cerebral and uh, thinking, uh, research uh, oriented, uh, and uh, certainly in academics. Um, these are the good, good uh, things. The negative things is that the reimbursement uh, is not the greatest. And therefore, in terms of revenue generating, this would be at the lower uh, spectrum. Uh, let's say one to think of salaries and, and financially. Um, so we, you gain something and you lose something. Uh, this would be uh, similar in those aspects to family practice, to internal medicine, primary care, uh, and uh, rheumatology, uh, you know, some of these uh, other outpatient specialties that follow people with chronic diseases. Okay, I think those are all really great things to know. I think you covered a lot in that one question. So thank you for that. Um, so I know you talked about how it's pretty good lifestyle um, in terms of work-life balance right now, but how would you um, compare now with like during residency? Like how is your residency and your work-life balance during that? Yeah, See, residency is internal, internal medicine residency, and that is uh, difficult. Uh, that is time consuming and, you know, internship is probably the hardest you would work in your uh, life. Uh, and after, uh, you know, the second and third years are, are pretty good, but then you have this limited time to get as much experience as you can. Endocrine fellowship is uh, not uh, difficult. Uh, there is enough time to read, to study. You get an exposure to uh, a smaller, uh, you know, part of medicine, uh, which uh, uh, for which the practical knowledge can be acquired uh, very rapidly, and then you just build up upon that. Uh, so it is, uh, it is not uh, intensive, so to say, like night calls and things like that. Even when you are on call, the endocrine emergencies are relatively rare. Uh, for example, the commonest uh, endocrine emergency would be diabetic ketoacidosis. However, that is often handled very well by the emergency room physicians and the house staff uh, on the floors uh, with uh, an urgent input hardly ever required by the endocrine fellow on call or the attending on call. A true endocrine emergency that requires us would be uh, thyrotoxicosis, uh, a, a thyroid storm. And uh, that is rare, but it does happen once in a while. Uh, and often it can be, many things can be managed uh, on the phone as well. Before, so you have time to go to see the patient. Okay. Does that answer your question? Meg? Yes, that does. I kind of have a follow-up to that to the on-call schedule. So um, would you say that most of your on-call schedule then was during your residency, your internal medicine residency, but less so in your fellowship than right now? Yeah, so we do have, we are on call. Uh, it's just that, you know, it, it would be uh, very unusual for uh, us to, uh, for as a physician, as an attending physician to have to uh, run uh, to the hospital in the evening on a regular basis. It, that would be unusual. The fellows during their training, when they are on call, they uh, do, you know, they, that is uh, relatively busy for them. 
they have a lot of patients they see in the hospital. Uh, they handle a lot of uh, nursing phone calls for blood sugars that are going up and down for sodiums that are being uh, managed. But uh, it would uh, rarely require someone to miss a lot of sleep during the night. Okay, cool. That is good to know. Um, and so you mentioned that you worked in a private practice setting for a while as well, and now you are in the slew care system of physicians. So what would you say is kind of the biggest difference in private practice versus um, working in an academic institution setting? I think it again depends on the bent of the mind, really, what you uh, like to do. Uh, I will. I can share my experience a little bit. Um, uh, when uh, I was in medical school, when I was in residency, I had my goal was to become a good physician and be in private practice. And uh, when I started my fellowship, uh, uh, the place where I trained, I had a great mentor, someone who was very, very successful in research uh, academically. And my first exposure to research was uh, really, in, you know, almost mind blowing to me. It was, uh, I was totally um, uh, very, very uh, enthusiastic about uh, research, enthralled by the whole concept. And uh, since then, then I just uh, stuck in academics because I enjoyed uh, doing the uh, research part so much. Um, after a few years uh, into my uh, uh, faculty position, then I had to uh, go into private practice for the underserved area. But even when I was doing private practice, I mean, it was enjoyable. There's no doubt about that. I was quite busy. Um, but uh, I continued to collect data, write uh, studies. I could not leave that part behind. And as soon as my three years of uh, uh, contract were over, uh, I came back and, and joined the faculty position as well. So I saw both sides. Um, the, uh, certainly in private practice, you can work very hard and earn a lot more money than you can in, in uh, academics. Um, uh, and uh, it, there is no right or wrong answer about that. It totally depends on what you want to do. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, being in practice uh, can be very satisfying as well. There are a lot of patients of endocrinology, and this is not going to change for a long time. The obesity and type 2 diabetes uh, being the main reason why we have such a backlog of endocrinology uh, patients. So job security is not a problem in endocrinology. <laughs> Um, and I actually had a follow up to that. Um, so in terms of managing like diseases like diabetes and um, um, type like the obesity, so like how closely do you work with primary care clinicians and what does that relationship of patient management look like? Well, all the patients that we see uh, have to have a primary care uh, physician. Uh, that's, uh, you know, we insist upon that uh, simply because there are other things that need to be handled. Uh, perhaps a patient is seeing me uh, regularly. Uh, often this is a common thing said by the patients that, you know, I see you every three months. I see my primary care physician once a year. Uh, I say, I said, yes, you still need them because they will make sure your uh, cancer screenings are done on time, your blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, sometimes we take care, sometimes they take care. And then, you know, if you have a cough, cold, vaccinations, things like that, you know, the, the, that is taken care of. So uh, uh, what we handle is the endocrine uh, part and the primary care would just leave that to us typically uh, for us to manage uh, they look at uh, our notes you know we send them uh, their notes uh, uh, so in in that way uh, i think uh, and, and that may be true with other specialties as well you know when there's a cardiac problem they are going to go and and uh, have it taken care of uh, uh, over there so it's a partnership but we are also all independently doing our thing Okay, um, so you mentioned several great things about um, endocrinology, um, but I wanted to ask, um, so when you were doing your IM residency, what was it that um, helped you decide that this was the specialty for you? Yeah, you know, I had some friends who really wanted to do procedures. Uh, endocrine would not be uh, somewhere where you would get to do a whole lot of procedures. We do thyroid biopsies, uh, and most of us don't do them long-term as well. So after fellowship and then some 
who are interested in thyroid uh, do that. But apart from that, we don't really have any, any procedure. So um, I think, again, it uh, depends on what you uh, like doing. Uh, and I was not uh, that much uh, interested in uh, in more of a procedure oriented uh, specialty, uh, and therefore I chose endocrinology more because I I, I like the uh, outpatient setting. Now I had some friends who liked the ICU kind of critical care setting, uh, some who liked in hospital work more than out, outpatient work. Uh, and uh, in fact, during your internal medicine residency, you spend a lot of time in the hospital uh, doing inpatient work, and many people feel more comfortable doing that than the outpatient, which uh, they only do once in a while for their continuity clinic, uh, so they feel uh, less prepared for that, uh, and that may be uh, a reason why I think many people choose the hospitalist route. Also, it pays very well. And you know, the, for the first couple of decades of life, that uh, that is uh, easy to handle. Uh, later on, that becomes harder. Right. Um, did you, when you went into your internal medicine residency, did you know what you wanted to do, or are you kind of deciding between a couple um, specialties? If so, um, I guess like what factors contributed to that decision? Just going to uh, raise the laptop up a little bit, but what you're saying is a very important point. And I think uh, I did not know what I wanted to do, uh, uh, you know, what uh, fellowship uh, I would have wanted. I just uh, knew that I wanted to specialize in something. Uh, I felt internal medicine is too vast to get a handle on it. And uh, some people like uh, doing primary care and uh, being in that setting. And I just wanted to uh, specialize in something. So I did my rotations like everyone else. And based on those, I, I picked. And I think that's what I would, I always suggest to, to everyone. Do rotations because uh, when you go to uh, a practice and see how things are being done, uh, you learn a lot. Um, uh, when I was in my residency, my friend and said, you know, you're not gonna, uh, he, he wouldn't want to do endocrinology at all because he can't deal with uh, diabetic foot ulcers. And I can tell you, I've, uh, I probably see a foot ulcer once a year or so, and it has always been like that. So, you know, unless you go, you don't know and you hear these things, uh, which are usually often not uh, true uh, either. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good point too, for us as medical students, like not getting so wrapped up and trying to figure out what exactly we have to do right now. Um, it's nice to know that, you know, even in residency, you're still kind of trying to figure out um, what works best for you. Uh, so looking back, is there anything you wish you would have known or done differently when you were a medical student? A lot, you know, but these things come with maturity. Um, uh, when, when one is a medical student, often reading the books and uh, getting the knowledge uh, into the brain to uh, pass the exam seems to be the most important thing. And that is important. Uh, but, you know, attending lectures, uh, uh, communicating with the uh, faculty to understand the, you know, the, the things that... Uh, uh, that may be written in the books, but uh, you don't really comprehend unless someone teaches it to you, especially if that person is an expert uh, in these things. I would have uh, hung around uh, with the house staff in the wards more, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, than I did, and uh, probably, uh, probably tried to uh, get involved in some research so that I would have gotten an idea of what it feels like. You know, uh, having not explored many of these uh, uh, options and many of these things, then you miss out on some things uh, uh, you know, uh, later on. So if, uh, for example, I had not done fellowship where I did, I would have never known that uh, my passion lies uh, in academics and research, you know, so. Perfect. Yeah. And so coming off of that, um, I know we've touched on a lot of aspects of this throughout the interview, um, but right now with all of your years of knowledge and experience, what is your favorite part of your job and what is maybe the not so exciting part of your job? As an uh, uh, endocrinologist, 
I, I, you know, favorite part of my job is kind of the things that we mentioned, the, uh, the work-life balance, the academics and uh, research and uh, education uh, and the camaraderie that you have with the patients. You know, this, with some patients, they, you see them, you make a difference and it really, um, uh, really feels as if you have, you have uh, made some gain. But that's probably true of uh, anyone who deals with uh, chronic diseases. I also like the fact that endocrinologists are a lot in demand and there's a lot of patients who are trying to uh, get to see us. It's a good problem to have when your wait list is, is that long, if you desire. So the, uh, the parts that I don't like is uh, the way our uh, the health system and the reimbursement system is set up in this country where it incentivizes the procedures and uh, puts uh, all the outpatient specialties at a disadvantage. It is changing a little bit. Uh, last year, uh, you know, there was a, a change in the amount in the way they allocate uh, RVUs for seeing patients versus uh, uh, doing procedures. So things have become better because people realize that. Um, uh, but I'm sure uh, nobody wants to be in a specialty where they uh, feel that uh, they are not paid as much as their peers are. Uh, and that's the part that still irks me uh, a lot about uh, endocrine, rheumatology, neurology, pediatrics, uh, and so on. Okay. Yeah, thank you for giving us those perspectives. I think that's something that we don't really talk about a lot is like, what don't you like about the specialty? So it's really nice to hear that. Um, from you, kind of going um, more about or talking more about work-life balance. What does that really look like for you uh, specifically? Like how hard do you find it to fit in hobbies and other interests um, outside of medicine? Um, I don't find it very hard. Uh, I have to say, you know, uh, simply because uh, time management isn't a problem. Uh, you know, we, we are all busy and uh, we can, you know, if there was more time, uh, one one would do more things, write more papers, you know, do do more projects. Uh, I would say there is uh, uh, there are enough opportunities uh, uh, for me at SLU to do what I want to do, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, patient care as well, you know, our clinics are quite busy. Uh, they are, but nothing is overwhelming. You know, you have a certain number of clinical hours. There is only uh, so hard you can work. Uh, there is, you know, you can't schedule 50 patients in that because that will not be fair to anyone. So we do our, our usual uh, uh, workload, uh, which is pretty much every 20 minutes we have a follow-up patient or we every 40 minutes it would be for a new patient. And that's uh, kind of standard for most, uh, most practices. But I don't... Uh, with, with that, uh, I don't have a lot of notes to write in the evening. Uh, it's not as if uh, all the day was spent seeing patients and then I'm, now I'm spending all my evening writing notes. And then, uh, you know, th there is usually no need for that. Some days it works out like that because, you know, one patient took a lot of time and, and so on. Um, so uh, there would be time to, you know, uh, I have little children. They are... Uh, uh, in sixth grade and third grade. Uh, so I, I can certainly spend uh, quite a bit of time with them. Um, I can keep working on the computer and tune them out while they're making the noise around. And that also goes on regularly. So, uh, so I have no, uh, no complaints <laughs> in the kind of setting I am. That's lovely to hear. And um, well, now that we're getting towards the end of the interview, um, we wanted to ask like, what would you um, recommend for us medical students to kind of prepare for your specialty um, or be more competitive for the specialty? Yeah, uh, first of all, come and see, you know, uh, occasionally uh, I've had, uh, you know, we obviously we get medical students. They are usually rotating with the house staff on the internal on the cons endocrine consult side. Um, uh, whenever you are in endocrinology, uh, see a few patients in the outpatient setting as well. Uh, I think there are I think MS3 or MS4, you get uh, ambulatory rotations now with endocrinology as well uh, uh, with me. Uh, and even if you don't have a rotation assigned, just come once or twice, you know, a few like four hours or so and get an idea of what kind of patients we end up seeing, how, you know, what do we do? 
and uh, that will at least get you started uh, towards uh, uh, towards getting an idea of endocrinology. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know further preparation, the only thing other thing that would set you apart is uh, do do some project, you know, clinical or basic um, uh, that uh, is uh, remotely uh, connected to endocrinology. I would say even if it's not endocrinology, any research that you do. Uh, shows uh, involvement and it will help you to be competitive for any any specialty. And I'm not telling you anything new. You guys probably already know that. And, and I, you know, uh, in fact, the the trouble is the other way around. You guys are trying to get into research projects and nobody responds to you guys and, and finds a suitable uh, uh, position for that. But be persistent. You know, everyone is busy, and if they ignore you once, just send an email again. Uh, and again, and eventually <laughs> it, it will happen. Great. Um, yes, I think that is great advice. Um, and I guess now we can open it up to our audience. If anyone has any questions for Dr. Dinsa, or if you wanted to put them in the chat as well, and we can kind of ask them for you. Um, while people are thinking, or you know, if you don't have any questions, one last question we have for you. Um, was is just if you had any last piece of advice for medical students in general? I think I would say always remember to have fun. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, this is like a rat race. Everybody's studying, trying to do a, a lot, but uh, in the end, uh, you know, uh, it would not be worth it if uh, uh, if. Uh, all you did was study, study, and and uh, and did not have fun. That's great. Words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things that I missed. Yeah, I'll take that advice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now. I think so. I think we can wrap this up. Speak now, or forever hold your peace. If you have any questions. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you so much for being here with us. And we really appreciate it. We know how busy you are um, with everything, especially with your two kids. So thank you so much um, for helping us out and being here with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Megan, Shreya, and everyone for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>